everyone and welcome to this video by Intellipath. You might be aware of all sorts of technologies developers use, but what comes handy when they need to quickly evolve an application? Among many other technologies, there is MongoDB. More than any other NoSQL database and dramatically more than any relational database, MongoDB's document-oriented data model makes it exceptionally easy to add or change fields and make things simplified. Now before we move on to the rest of the video, Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Now let's take a look at the agenda. Firstly, we will see what is MongoDB, then how does it work, then we will see where do we actually use MongoDB, then how is MongoDB different from RDBMS, some features of MongoDB, then we will move on to the advantages and disadvantages, after which we will look at some of the important terminology in MongoDB. Then we'll take a look at some of the basic commands, some crude operations, and lastly, some hands-on. Now let's start with the first agenda, that is what is MongoDB. So MongoDB is an open source document-oriented database that is made to hold a lot of data and provide you with a lot of flexibility when working with it. It falls within the NoSQL database category because MongoDB does not store or retrieve data in the form of tables. Let's move on to our next agenda, that is, how does it work? We will now examine the actual behind-the-scenes action. As is well known, MongoDB serves as a database server, and these databases are where the data is kept. Or, to put it another way, the MongoDB environment provides you with a server that you can launch and use to host several databases utilizing MongoDB. The data is saved in the collections and documents because of its NoSQL database. As a result, as illustrated below, the database, collection and documents are related to one another. So similar to how MySQL database has tables, a MongoDB database has collections. You may make as many databases and collections as you like. We currently have documents inside the collection. These documents contain the data that we wish to store in the MongoDB database and because there are schema-less, several documents may be found in a single collection without necessarily being related to one another. The fields are used to build the documents. Similar to columns in a relational database, fields and documents are key value pairs. Any decent data type, including double, string, boolean and others, may be used as the value of a field. Decent documents are the format used for the data stored in MongoDB. Decent refers to the binary encoding of JSON documents in this context. Or, to put it another way, the MongoDB server transforms the JSON data into the more efficient Decent binary format in the backend, which is then stored and queried. You are able to store nested data in MongoDB documents. In contrast to SQL, this data nesting lets you construct complicated relationships between data and store them in the same document which makes working with and obtaining data incredibly efficient. Now let's move on to our next agenda that is where do we use MongoDB? Firstly we have big data. Consider MongoDB before RDBMS databases if you need to store a significant amount of data in tables. Your database can be partitioned and sharded using MongoDB's built-in functionality. Next, we have unstable schema. While MongoDB lacks a schema, RDBMS makes it difficult to add a new column. It will be very simple to add a new field and it won't affect older documents. Next, we have distributed data. Since numerous copies of the data are kept on many servers, even in the event of hardware failure, data recovery is quick and secure. Now let's see how is MongoDB different from RDBMS. MongoDB, it is a document-oriented, non-relational database, while for RDBMS, the database is a relational one. For MongoDB, it is appropriate for storing hierarchical data. For RDBMS, it is not suitable for storing any kind of hierarchical data. Again, MongoDB, its schema is very dynamic. While for RDBMS, it already has a schema. For MongoDB, the CAP theorem is at its core, 
consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. For RDVMS, it focuses on the characteristics of ACID, that is atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Lastly, MongoDB, it performs significantly better than RDBMS in terms of speed. And for RDBMS, it performs worse than MongoDB in terms of speed. Now let's take a look at the features of MongoDB. Firstly, we have schemaless databases. MongoDB offers this wonderful capability. One collection in a schemaless database can contain a variety of document kinds. In the MongoDB database, numerous documents may be stored in a single collection, each of which may have a distinct amount of fields, kind of content, and size. Contrary to relational databases, there is no requirement that one document is comparable to another. This amazing feature allows MongoDB to give databases a lot of flexibility. Next feature we have is Document Oriented. Unlike RDBMS, MongoDB stores all of its data in documents other than tables. In contrast to RDBMS, the data in these documents is significantly more flexible because it is stored in fields that is key value pairs other than rows and columns. Additionally, every document has a distinct object ID. Next feature is indexing. Every field in the document in MongoDB database is indexed with primary and secondary indices, which makes it quicker and easier to acquire or search for data from the pool of data. If the data is not indexed, the database must search each document individually using the given query, which is time-consuming and ineffective. Next feature is scalability. With the use of sharding, MongoDB offers horizontal scalability. Using the shard key, a significant amount of data is divided into chunks and then distributed evenly among shards that are spread across numerous physical servers. Sharding is the process of distributing data across multiple servers. Additionally, it will add new computers to an active database. Next is replication. MongoDB offers high availability and redundancy by making multiple copies of the data and sending each of these copies to a different server. This way, in the event that one server fails, the data can still be retrieved from the other server. Next, we'll see aggregation. A single result or computed result can be obtained by performing actions on the gathered data through the use of aggregation. It is comparable to the group by clause in SQL. It offers three different aggregations, that is, a MapReduce function, an aggregation pipeline, and a single-purpose aggregation approach. Lastly, we have high performance. Due to its characteristics like scalability, indexing, replication, etc., MongoDB has a very high performance and data persistence compared to other databases. Let's take a look at the advantages now. It is a NoSQL database without schemas. When using MongoDB, the database schema does not need to be designed. It is unable to perform join operations. It gives the fields in the papers a lot more flexibility. It includes diverse data. It offers scalability, availability, and great performance. It effectively supports geospatial. The data is kept as BSON documents because the data is document oriented. Additionally, multiple document asset transition is supported. There is no need for SQL injection. It is simple to incorporate with Hadoop for big data. Now some disadvantages. It stores data using a large amount of the memory. More than 16 MB of data cannot be stored in the papers. That is the document. Additionally, there are restrictions on data nesting in BSON. You are not permitted to nest data deeper than a hundred layers. Now, before moving to the hands-on, let's try to understand some important terminology with, with respect to MongoDB. Firstly, we have database. You must first comprehend the concept database. Simply said, a database is a place where collections are kept. A project will often have one database with a variety of collections because a database in MongoDB and a database in SQL are essentially equivalent. Next is collection. A database's collection are groups of related documents. In terms of concept, this is equivalent to a 
SQL's database tables. For the data model, you typically have one collection. Your app, for instance, might include user, post, and product collections. Next, we have document. A record in a collection is all that a document is. In a SQL table, this is semantically equivalent to a row. Typically, a document represents a single term from a collection. A document in MongoDB is really just a JSON object. Lastly, we have field. Fields make up the final term you need to comprehend. A field in a document is nothing more than a key value pair. This is basically equivalent to an SQL column. Each document has many fields with data like name, address, interest, etc. in them. A key distinction between MongoDB and SQL is that a field can contain data other than just characters, numbers, booleans, etc. just as JSON objects and arrays. Additionally, separate fields can be configured for MongoDB documents inside the same collection. When using MongoDB, a user document in the user's collection could contain the field's name and age, while other user document could have the field's name, address, and hobbies. This is in contrast to SQL, where all entries in a database must have the same columns. Now, before working with data, we must first co comprehend a few basic commands. Let's take a look at them. Firstly, we have mongosh or mongo sh. So, this is the first command we'll talk about. This command grants us direct access to our local MongoDB installation and is executed at the terminal. The mongo sh prompt is where you will run all the commands in the rest of this video. Next command is show dbs. A specific command that displays all MongoDB database is show dbs. When you run this, you will see that certain databases that were created during MongoDB installation are already present. Next one is use and arrowheads. We have the database name. You can change to a database with this command based on the DB name variable. Use mydb for instance to access the mydb database. Even if the database does not exist, it will still switch you to it and if you subsequently contribute any data, the database will be created and the data added. In contrast to SQL, MongoDB lacks commands for creating data or collections because these things happen automatically when you add data. Next we have DB. This command just prints out the name of the current database you are in. Then we have CLS. Uh, clears to the terminal screen. Next we have show collections. You may use the display collections or show collections command to print out details about every collection in, in a database if you are connected to it. Next we have db drop database. The current database and all of its data will be deleted by this command. Additionally, you will see that this command resembles JavaScript code quite a bit. In fact, this is true with a lot of MongoDB operations. This is good because it can make learning MongoDB much simpler if you are accustomed to JavaScript. Lastly, we have exit. The exit command which ends the MongoSH session, you initiated with the MongoSH command. This is the final fundamental command. So these were the most basic commands. Let's uh, take a look at the crude methods. We'll discuss what are the crude commands. Uh, and not go in depth right now. Firstly, we have the create operations. Create or insert operations helps one in adding new documents to the collection. If by chance the collection does not exist, create operations goes ahead and creates the collection. Next, we have read operations. Read operations query a collection for documents, that is, retrieve documents from a collection. Next, we have update operations. They just modify the existing documents in a collection. And lastly, we have delete operations and they delete documents from a collection. And now let's begin with the hands-on. Now let's start with the hands-on. We will be going to the MongoDB download center. I will suggest opening a new tab and uh, type in MongoDB download. So we will be downloading the community edition. 
so let's just click on it and after we direct it to this page you can see there are different options here and it says download mongodb community server the servers and managers and kubernetes operators we will just take a look at this available downloads what you need to do is select your platform amazon linux windows mac whatever your os is just select it and the package i suggest that we go with msi only and just click on download let the process begin it might take a while to get this downloaded and let's wait till then now the download is almost complete let's wait a few more seconds and there it is the download is complete now we'll run this installer let's double click on it so it's preparing to install now this wizard it will help you through all the steps of installing mongodb let's just click on next and i accept next we'll get the complete now we're installing mongodb as a service so we'll just continue with the prefilled fields and we'll just click on next and there's something called mongodb compass and we we'll get to it in this hands on as well and uh, let's just go ahead and uh, install mongodb compass and mongodb so we'll click on install As you can see it says MongoDB Compass is being installed and it will launch once it is done. Again it resumes and there we have our MongoDB Compass. Let's wait for it to load the platform and here it is. The local host by default on the system is this port 27017 that is a by default one and we can just leave it like that and click on connect. And this is how the platform looks like mongodb compass now we'll get back to it and uh, we have other things to cover let's get back to mongodb yeah now it's done we'll just click on finish now it's all done now after you have mongodb there's mongodb installed in our system and plus we have mongodb compass so so after we have mongodb in our system we will need mongo sh or mongosh this is the shell that you need to actually work with and access and read database queries so to get mongo sh or mongosh we will need to visit again the mongodb download center here we have searched how to download mongosh and uh, we will get to this link that says install mongodb community edition on windows if we scroll down we see that it talks about mongodb shell that is mongo sh and here you can see there is a link let's click on it there we have it the mongodb download center there it is this is for mongo mongodb shell let's download this uh, as well the version is the latest one and windows is 64 bit we are downloading it as zip and we will click on download now after downloading the shell file we need to extract the folder in our desired location let's click on it and let's see what are the components of the zip file there we have it there is mongoose the file folder we'll extract it to this location the default location and we'll just click on okay it got extracted let's take a look so we'll open the location that it was saved in that is go to downloads here we have the file folder click on this and the bin file so what we need to do now is to add the mongo sh binary to the path environment variable now how to do that we'll just click here 
the path is there we will copy it and now after copying the location of the bin file we will just search environment variables so here you can see it says edit the system environment variables we'll just click enter and the system properties dialog box appears and in the advanced section at the bottom right you can see there's something called environment variables we will just click on it and there are two sections as you can see there's user variables for admin and then system variables in these system variables we need to edit the path variable select it and click on edit here you can see the number of paths already added we need to add the mongodb or mongosh path variable we will select the path variable click on edit and then click on new here we will paste the path that we copied and click on okay okay and again okay so now the path variable is added to the environment system variable now to make sure that the path variable is configured correctly we need to open the command prompt and we will run the following command we will type in mongo sh double dash help as you can see we have a bunch of valid commands that get displayed after we enter this command so if it is rightfully configured a list of valid commands gets displayed and if not you will probably get some error and if it is uh, rightfully configured these are the commands that you will get to see so now what we need to do next is uh, and now we need to connect to our mongodb deployment uh that is done by running the command mongo sh without any command line to connect to the mongodb instance that is running on your local host uh, with the default port as we already saw 27017 so we will just run mongosh and if this happens you are in a default database and uh, it means that the deployment is connected and everything is ready to go and test this is nothing but the default database that we are currently in and this database does not contain any data now let's try to verify the connection for that we need to run this command db.get mongo and parenthesis press enter as you can see it's uh, running properly let's go ahead and uh, as you can see right here what this method returns is the connection string uri uh, for our uh, current connection now let's try a few basic commands so first one is show dbs what it does it shows all the existing databases we'll just cl click on enter and uh, there we have it we have four existing databases and uh, let's try to create a database so let's say use db1 press enter now we have switched to db1 what it does even the command says use db1 and db1 that database does not exist so even if it does not exist it will go ahead and create that database or collection for you and then switch to it so as we wrote the command use db1 and even though db1 did not exist mongodb went ahead and created db1 and then switched the command line to it now we'll just practice one or two basic commands we will try to see collections as we already talked about it so we will see what collections are there in this database even though it's brand new we just created it let's just see how this command works so we try type in show collections there are no collections so we won't be able to see any so we'll just switch to another database it is new db and we have switched to new db and let's see what collections we have here as you can see we have one collection named as c1 now let's say i want to drop the database d1 db1 uh, so i'll first switch to it and the command for deleting databases is db dot drop database and parenthesis. As you can see, it says OK one dropped db one. And even after you can see that db one is dropped, we are still inside it. 
So what happens is uh, the interesting thing about MongoDB is you never need to create uh, any database collection or a document. If it does not exist and you need to use it, MongoDB will go ahead and create it for you. Let's clear the screen here. And we're still in DB1 even though we deleted it. So this becomes our default database now. Now let's go to MongoDB Compass and let's see how to operate on that platform. It's right here. And as you can see, we have the same databases that we got to see when we use the command show DBS. And uh, the queries and once you open, there are no collections. Admin config and local are the default databases that we get even though we have not created them. They are just there. And this is new DB. We can create another collection. Uh, the documents. So these are the two documents. And uh, the platform is pretty simple to use. Rather than going to a terminal a shell to access and use MongoDB, you can just use this platform called MongoDB Compass. And the great thing about uh, MongoDB is that it's very similar to JavaScript. And if you're familiar to familiar with JavaScript, uh, calling functions and all that, it'll be pretty easy for you to even work with MongoDB. And that's it for this video. Thank you. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides full stack web development course in collaboration with ENICT IIT Guwahati. The course link of which is given in the description below. Now let's continue with the session.